If you followed me in my last video, you saw how I intentionally pushed myself to Nature Journal on one of the hottest days of the summer. In this video, you can see how I did a landscape painting when I finally made it to the lake. In this video, I share 10 major lessons that you can apply to your nature journaling. There are two chances to win a prize, and I share a personal thing that I'm struggling with and have never talked about publicly. So this is my preliminary sketch and made a little frame and tried to block in some of the major shapes and a little bit of the values to distinguish these sort of major blocks. Um, one uh, challenge I have is uh, drawing these tulies that are growing out of the water and they have these long straight shapes and they also have pale ones overlapping dark ones and so I'm trying to just block that into like one big shape but I should probably go in there and um, outline the ones that I want to reserve as white or else I'll just end up with dark and I won't be able to go back because I'm using watercolor. rocks not very soft oh. I'm kind of wishing I had my chair luckily I can nature journal in a crouching position I'm mainly trying to get the value differences between the sky and uh, the dry grass and the forested areas. So it's like focusing on the big differences before focusing on the small differences. So now I have to do this these pale gray branches and this pale greenish gray lichen has been a huge challenge for me and I still haven't figured out how to get it right, especially when it's branches in the tree because I'm not used to the trees being such a light value. It's almost like when I uh, squint my eyes a little bit, it almost is like the same value as the sky. Um, so that's been a challenge for me. I'm gonna see what I can do right now. It would, it's definitely the kind of thing, like if I were using acrylics, I'd be able to nail that color and value probably, but for whatever reason, um, just with the transparency of watercolor, it's very challenging to get the value right and the color. So now you can see that I'm painting in the local colors over the values that I established earlier. And it's this way, I already have the values correct. No matter what color I put on top of them, it'll still stay that amount of darkness or lightness. And that makes it easier to keep the values correct, which is usually more important than the local colors. And I was originally gonna just keep the colors inside of this frame and keep the value study on the outside of the frame there but i forgot and went over the line a little bit there with the green now i'm gonna come in and do the same thing with these tule plants that are growing in the foreground and add the local colors to them and hopefully not make it too dark this is a stage where you can mess up your painting i'm also the other thing i'm going to do um, that will help is 
Um, I don't want those toolies to disappear and, and be kind of the same looking as the forested background. So I'm gonna use a more saturated green when I paint them, which they actually are more saturated green, but that will make them stand out more in the foreground because foreground elements have more saturated color. One thing that I've learned about myself is that I get pretty self-conscious. Like I think a lot about what other people are thinking about me. And when I'm out nature journeying in public now, I've kind of created a role for myself where I'm like, okay, I'm drawing, you know, and I'm okay with people seeing me doing that. But I'm still a little bit like self-conscious about making videos of myself, um, especially out in nature where I might be people might think I'm like just some weird crazy guy talking to himself in the bushes and so just now I was sitting here drawing quietly and as I was I was painting um, this lady who was swimming through the lake jumped in the water and started swimming through the lake and she was coming towards where um, I was sitting and I don't think she knew I was here and maybe she was planning on getting out at this little spot here and um, I was like quiet and I noticed like getting kind of like this weird nervous feeling and when I think about it it doesn't make any sense but I have this I know that I have this I'm self-conscious about like starting to talk or like surprising this lady or whatever you know and making someone else feel uncomfortable I'm always thinking about that and so um, I just while she right when she was starting to get closer and I don't know if she was gonna come out onto the rocks here uh, I don't know if she's wearing any clothes or anything and uh, so I started talking and describing like how I was painting the values and stuff like that. <laughs> and she heard me and I think she was a little bit surprised, but turned around and now she has to swim all the way back across the lake. I think her plan was to get out right here. So um, that's kind of funny. Sleep. I shouldn't have bragged about being able to nature journal in a crouching position. All right, so I just did the toolies and um, I had to make a choice there about color and sort of fictionalizing colors a little bit. So I was noticing that there's a lot of like a gray color near the bottom of the plants where there's a bunch of dry leaves and the confusing part is that the dry leaves are paler value but then that bottom area on the plants is usually darker because it's in the shadows so I made a choice to ignore and fictionalize that local color of the, the leaves actually being dead and paler and this sort of gray and decided to um, just use a dark green um, I used my perylene green down there as a, a dark shadow and just to deciding that the more the priority is to get those values correct near that bottom of that shape instead of worrying about the local color which could have confused um, how that reads to the eye so sometimes that you know that's an example of knowing how something should look and then making a decision to towards that instead of just drawing what you see all right i'm done with this painting and there's a couple things here that I learned um, one is I should have known better and I should have started with a couple like quick sketches and just thumbnails before diving into something that takes up almost half of my page and I think I got lucky and things worked out all right um, partly because I was really paying attention to value now the beginning of the day the first couple drawings you know it's probably best just focus on getting your pencil moving and because there's going to be sacrificial pancakes those first couple of drawings are probably not going to be the best and just developing a little bit of momentum at the beginning of the day is is critical now i was not thinking about that um, when i started this but things worked out okay so that's an exception 
to the rule, but in general, starting out with a page where maybe you don't even pull out the color, you might just do a bunch of sort of compositions and keep keeping your, your brain moving and keeping your hand moving and, and warming up that way. So now the danger is I have this big colored, fairly decent, in my opinion, looking drawing to start the day off. I don't have any metadata. I don't have any sketches. One thing that I've learned um, through lots of suffering is that sometimes when you get lucky and you start off like this, you start getting precious about the page. I have that problem now, especially because it's a brand new journal. So I have even more attachment because there's this sort of feeling like, oh, if I get off to a good start, then I don't wanna mess it up. It's looking so pretty, so clean, and I have one good drawing. So that's the danger. That's another danger um, to be aware of in yourself. And one um, potential cure is to turn to a page where you can't see this anymore and get back into your sketches. So the danger for me now, if I wanna keep nature journaling, I wanna keep learning, I wanna keep practicing, I wanna keep getting pencil miles, is that this becomes the sort of like holy precious thing that I don't wanna mess up. And that's a problem. Hey, thanks for watching this video. As you might know, my main goal with these videos is to inspire and empower you to nature journal better. So if you want more of that, subscribe and click on that notification bell down below so that you will know as soon as I publish a new video. I have a bunch of cool projects in store and I can't wait to share them with you. Bye.